What is this? Tapri style. <laughs> no reveal this time. <laughs> what a way to reveal these lenses. Anyway, welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishnan. Of course, in this video, we're going to be talking about three brand new lenses that uh, Sigma launched for Fuji X mount. The 16, the 30 and the 56. All 1.4 extremely fast lenses. Well, you seeing our new uh, backdrop? Well, we have to thank Lorda Belmondo for allowing us to shoot in this premises. Of course, I live here. We just recently shifted here uh, after COVID, after a prolonged uh, delay uh, in getting my apartment uh, position. Well, we recently shifted and we live there. Fantastic place, great location. Look up in the internet, uh, Lorda Belmondo. What a place in Pune to stay. Anyway, so we have three lenses. All three are from uh, Fuji's contemporary series. Um, this is the 56, nice and compact. Then the 30 and the 16. Now in Pixel Village, when we review our products, uh, we look to three aspects of the product in great detail. Build, of course, and the features. And then, of course, then we come up with our own small two bits about what we think about the product. A couple of months back, we reviewed another set of uh, contemporary lenses from Sigma that was for the full frame um, mirrorless. Now this is for, of course, uh, for the APS-C, the crop sensor mirrorless. Now the Sigma nomenclature uh, for a full frame is DGDN and uh, for the um, crop sensor it is dcdn so whenever you see dcdn well you know what the lens is for uh, so this is the 56 1.4 dcdn and uh, compared to the dgdn i can instantly see a lot of difference uh, not in terms of build quality but in terms of the features that is available on the lens body now of course the other one had a metal hood this has a plastic resin. It's not plastic, it's kind of a resin, but very well made uh, uh, lens hood. Uh, it's got a lens cap, of course, and uh, it has a nice wide front element. In fact, all lenses, let me open all of them and uh, all have a very nice wide front element. Now, when you look at the design language, it's very typical of uh, Sigma, very minimalistic. But there's a small difference between the DZDN and the DGDN. The DGDN had a proper aperture ring. Uh, it, it was, of course, I told you it was made of metal and it felt very solid in your hand. There is no difference in the solidity, except that this is made with a different material altogether, but there is no uh, aperture ring. Now, this is something which a Fuji user is going to miss, okay? But I'm sure this lens is meant for a different type of Fuji users. Uh, all those people who have taken to Fuji for their color science, of course, but they still want to not spend that uh, very, pay very high prices for their, uh, you know, the, or to buy the original Fuji lenses. Those lenses, you know, are, yeah, comparatively really expensive. We'll look at the pricing at the end of the session. But uh, except the fact that the aperture ring is on the body, you need to control it from the body, which you can do very comfortably. This lens feels very nice. Well, we have actually used uh, a 16, a 33 and a 23 and a 56 in the office. Uh, currently, we have the 56 with us. We'll try and do a small comparison somewhere along the uh, you know video, but uh, comparing all three lenses will not be possible because we don't have all those lenses with us. But however, whatever little comparison that we can do, we'll try and do it. 
all right. Now this is the 30 mm. Fuji, in fact, do not have a 30 mm. They have a 23, they have 33 and 35, but this is kind of gone and fill in that one gap, uh, which was there, 30 mm, which effectively will be in, in full frame terms will be like 40, equivalent to 45 mm. Of course, we all know that calculation, but 30 mm, 1.4. And this is the 16 mm. In comparison to the Fuji 16 mm, in fact, Fuji has two 16 mm. One is in 1.4, the other is 2.8. This one is a little uh, bigger in size. Of course, there is no aperture ring, uh, but uh, this has a nice front element. It's 67 mm, nice and wide, and they have given a nice lens hood too in front of uh, the lens which will be useful when you shoot that wide landscape. So doing, working with the 16mm, I think a lens hood is always uh, useful. And uh, yeah, so there are three lenses. Of course, let me also talk about uh, the 56. The 56mm has a filter diameter of 57 and the, uh, the 30 has a filter diameter of 52mm. Uh, so three brand new lenses from Sigma for uh, Fuji X mount. Uh, we're going to shoot with all three. And uh, which is the camera that we're going to use? Fuji XS10. XS10, all right. We are currently shooting with the X-T3. And uh, yeah, we go around uh, and explore this place. We do some nice wide, uh, you know, uh, shots with the 16, of course, and some close-ups, some portraits, if you can, with the uh, 56, and some other shots with the uh, 30. All right, we will also see the 1.4 is likely to offer you nice bokeh, and we'll also see how colors are reproduced, of course, uh, because lenses, the optics have it's on tilt towards a certain uh, color. For example, uh, Fuji lenses by and large are a little warm. Uh, well, the images that I saw all over internet, this one is a little neutral in that way and a little brighter too. So we will look at all that. And though we don't have enough lenses to compare, you know, a 16 uh, of Fuji to compare with the 16 of Sigma, which anyway we don't really encourage in Pixel Village, but whatever we can do to give you the right information is what we will do in the next part of this video. Okay, let's try and do some bokeh test. All right, 16 mm, 1.4 at full open 1.4. Uh, I mean, the image will be a little distorted because it's 16 mm, nice foliage at the backdrop. Let's see what we get. Well, uh, Sigma promises nice round bokeh because it's got a nice round aperture, nine blades, but they form nice round aperture. Uh, so let's take a look at the uh, image. All right, look into the camera. Okay, let me repeat this uh, exercise with the 30. Look that way. Yeah, nice. Fantastic. Now the 56. Nice. Uh, now what we're going to do is, since we also have the 56 Fuji with us, we're going to take one comparison shot with the Fuji 56. Now the difference is the Fuji 56 is a 1.2. Uh, I'm sure it'll make a difference. This lens will definitely feel, this is like I told you, very different from the DGDN. I mean, the DCDN is a little different. And uh, the philosophy here of Fuji is very close to the DGDN. Uh, so yeah, this is nice. Full open, 1.2, uh, same place. And let me see. Definitely the book is much more uh, pronounced. Let me also take a shot at 1.4 so that we have a proper comparison. You will know, you know, when you see it side by side, you will realize uh, the difference, all right? <laughs> 
what we are trying to do here is to check the focus tracking ability of this lens. Now, Sigma cannot be really doubted for the ability to track focus. Uh, there is also this feeling that a third party, we'll talk about third party later, but you know, these non-native lenses um, being very slow and stuff like that. But I would uh, argue that it's a lot to do with the camera body itself. However, uh, let's try and do a kind of a focus shifting uh, using this as 0.1 and that as 0.2, both in stills and in video. The first one is in still mode, roll, okay? So this is the near end and that's a far end. Near end and the far end. Well, it's a 16 mm lens, um, so, but still I can see through this uh, viewfinder a small kind of a breathing happening. Uh, let me switch this to video mode and let's see what happens here okay and there there is a little bit of a hesitation uh, now the focus tracking the custom setting in the camera is set to low so that the shift happens really low but still it is acquiring the focus very fast and still kind of double checking now, Fuji is not exactly known for their focusing speed, all right? Uh, not definitely not like the Canons or the Sonys. Uh, but however, let me also tell you that I have not really missed any focus because, the, because of that hesitation or because of any kind of uh, deficiencies in the focusing system is something that you get used to and you work without it. You, you need to be a little extra careful, that's all. Let's try the 30 mm at the still uh, photography mode. Roll. Brilliant. Okay, this is now the focus at the near end. Near end, far end. While the focus is shifting very smoothly, there's a little bit of a hesitation. Again, not exactly can be uh, attributed to the lens. I think it is the Fuji uh, which is doing that trick. Um, Okay, let's try and now shift to the video mode. Okay, this is in the video mode. All right, now the focus is at the far end, shifting to the close end, far end, close end. There is still that hesitation. Um, let me try and change the uh, focusing uh, custom setting to, you know, the speed to really low so that it happens, you know, and the tracking sensitivity also to low, so that let's see now what happens. Yes, it's shifting, but that hesitation is still there. It is acquiring the focus. But there is that hesitation, but I think it is uh, Fuji that's doing the trick. Now the 56 mm, all right. Now in still mode, roll. roll. Okay, and the far end, the close end, the far end, and the close end. Well, it's focusing well again that, you know, hunting for uh, focus is happening. Uh, let me switch this to the video mode and the same thing one there is a hesitation. Uh, again I would attribute this to uh, the camera more than the lens. Uh, we will also try and see how it's holding on to a certain focus or, you know, tracking the focus. We'll see that uh, later. In fact, uh, we are shooting using a Fuji camera. We will shift this lens on to that and see how it is tracking while, uh, you know, moving along with the subject. Okay, now, now let's go and do some traveling shots.
We've been playing with these three lenses for, uh, you know, quite some time and today we actually got down to doing this video. Uh, let me tell you right at the outset that I really, really like all these three lenses in comparison to, let's say, the Fuji lenses that I have used, the XF lenses that we have used. Uh, well, the only thing that if I can nitpick is that I miss the uh, the aperture ring, the tactile feeling of the aperture ring, right? But I did not miss it today because, of course, it was there for me to use it, except that I had to access it from the camera body. Um, otherwise, it felt very nice. Uh, the 16mm is a little bigger than the Fuji 16mm, but the rest are all in comparison. The 56, in fact, is way smaller than the Fuji 56. In terms of usage, 16mm uh, is perfect for street events, uh, you know, candid kind of shots, a little bit of architecture, landscapes, perfect. And it's 1.4, so you can do those, uh, you know, extremely wide open, shallow depth of field, kind of a short environmental portraits, if you like, all that can be done with this. With the 30, with that, uh, you know, additional advantage of uh, uh, that 5 mm, because effectively it become 45, right? In full frame uh, kind of uh, comparison, that is perfect. Um, I like the way it's shot. Uh, I like the images and of course the 56. You know, 56 1.4 is something which we always liked. I'm sure all the Fuji users will agree with the 56 1.2 uh, being their favorite lens. This is 1.4. Of course, the biggest advantage is the price. Well, almost all lenses are half the price of uh, an original Fuji lens, which comes as a big relief uh, to the Fuji owner, especially those uh, photographers who got into Fuji uh, from the lower end. Say, for example, XS10 is one typical example. We also did some video, of course. The bokeh characteristics were brilliant. I mean, comparable to the original Fuji lens. Uh, the 16 had great uh, bokeh, round as they promised. Uh, the 30 and the 56 also had a nice round bokeh. Uh, well, that's exactly what they had promised. Um, and they have delivered it, all right. I was with a photographer friend of mine the other day and we were discussing about, uh, you know, this common usage called third-party lenses. Well, it's a little bit, I mean, we thought it's a little bit of uh, a derogatory in terms of, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of explaining somebody's stature as third-party. Mm, and, and just because people call a lens manufacturer as a third-party, it actually brings down the image of that brand in the mind of a photographer. Well, we actually debated or discussed about it uh, quite a bit and we came to a conclusion that, look, all these manufacturers, the so-called third-party lens manufacturers, have been making lenses for almost all camera brands under the sun and also uh, have participated as an OEM uh, lens uh, manufacturer for most of the brands. Uh, it's, it's a secret, by the way. Uh, that makes them actually better, uh, you know, positioned to actually deliver a lens than the, you know, the native, the camera's original lenses. Uh, I, through this video, I definitely would like to kind of uh, tell the photographers that, well, you should not definitely worry about acquiring a third party lens. Well, in fact, at the end of that conversation, we ended up on a consensus note that they should be termed as specialty lens manufacturers, you know. That's how they should be positioned. So I, I, I seriously urge our photographer friends not to really worry about uh, picking up a lens like this. Uh, but just keep in mind that uh, when you pick up a lens, make sure that you don't mix and match the lens, okay? Uh, if you are going with the contemporary series of Sigma, then I would suggest that you stay with contemporary because there is a 
certain uh, look and feel which each lens uh, kind of gives you. All lenses should be ideally from one brand and one particular, uh, say, model. For example, contemporary, like I was talking to you about. By doing that, what you will achieve is that one look in your story. If you are a wedding photographer and if you shot your wide angles with one lens from one manufacturer, your mid shots from another and your close ups with, 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 with a third of, uh, you know, kind of manufacturer, then chances are that, you know, the, the visual language can get a little affected at times. This is a very personal, this is something which I have observed because of which I, I try to stay with one brand and one particular uh, series uh, uh, for my photography. So, well, uh, Sigma Contemporary for uh, Fuji is getting built. Now they have three lenses. One zoom lens is in the offing. They've already announced it. So, uh, well, that will actually give you a nice camera kit with uh, three block lenses and one zoom lens. Well, what else? Yes, one thing I forgot to mention right at the beginning, which I think I should mention, is that the bayonet uh, mount is of metal. It's brass and the joints are weather sealed. So this one point I missed in the morning uh, to, to kind of talk about, but that's very important. All these lenses will now be available in India. Uh, the MRP and the street price I'll try and add in the description. It also comes with a two-year warranty, so look out for that in your nearest uh, dealer's uh, store. What else? Keep shooting. I'll see you in another video. If you are interested in uh, learning photography, please head over to pixelvillage.com. We have a set of fantastic photography teachers there taking classes for you. They're all recorded sessions. You can watch the bouquet of offering and if you like it, you can subscribe. Bye for now.